Um, so I'm going to arrange these a little differently. find a solution to one of these equations. Order? You get a ordered pair of like one seven. Or something, right? And so that ordered pair is a solution if 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 y on all this specific my transect in the J Does the line you're talking about a line? Well as long as it like if like you stick something in for X yes. and it can come out with something else for Y. Right. Okay, so if you have an ordered pair 1 comma 7, as you said, for instance. Uh, if you plug in 1 for x and 7 for y, the equation will be true. Right? True is a good word. Uh, so the equation will be true if you have a solution. And the solution will be an x and a y. OK. So let's slowly find solutions to each of these. So we have a solution to uh, y equals x squared. Yeah? 1, 1. 1, 1, right? OK, so we put this in for x, 1. OK? And then this column will be y, right? Which is found by doing x squared. So 1. Right. Somebody else got a solution to this equation? 2, 4. 2, two, four. two goes in, 4 comes out. <coughs> Next? Any, any other solution? 3 and 9. 3 and 9? How about a negative? Everybody got a negative, uh, negative, negative x? Negative 1 and 1. Negative 1 and 1. Okay. These are good. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at today is, uh, is very similar to what we looked at with uh, absolute value equations and their graphs. Looking at how bringing in different things to change the equation will affect the graph when we graph it, OK? Um, so before we, we look at the graphs, let's look at the, uh, at the solutions All right. and how these y values are going to compare to these y values. And something I want to uh, reiterate is something I've said before, but it bears repeating. Um, okay. This function is x squared, OK? And so, in a sense, is this function, where this function has that as part of it. Okay. Something goes in to this, this orange thing. We can see it. We, we can imagine it or envision it uh, going through these steps. It goes in, and something gets squared. Right? Something goes in, and it gets squared. Okay? After that thing is done getting squared, which is what happens to numbers in this function, by the way. Right? Numbers, get fun numbers get squared in this function. What happens after that? Times 4. It gets multiplied by 4. First you square it, and then it gets done getting squared, and then it gets multiplied by 4. Right? We'll put like 4 parentheses. It goes into the parentheses and gets multiplied by 4. And then it comes out, and you know, that's what y is. Just a, a little picture of a factory, like I like to think of. Right? So this part, this part is already, uh, we've already calculated all those parts, right? For these x values. We took 1 and we squared it, right? That's the first thing that, this, that happens in this function here. Uh, we took 1 and we squared it, and then we multiply it by 4. So we just take this guy right here, and we go to the next step in this process, we would multiply by 4. So what do we get? <coughs> we have 4. 1 times 4 is 4. Okay. If we put a 2 into this function, first it gets squared, right? Which has already happened in this function. And so the only thing we'd have left to do is multiply by 4, so we get 16. 3 goes into this function, it gets squared. When you square it, you get 9. And when you multiply 4 by 9, you get 36. And the same thing here. Negative 1 goes in, it gets squared, you multiply by 4. When you square negative 1, you get 1, you multiply <coughs> by 4, you get 4. Let's take a brief look at this, this graph. Um, 
Here, let's, let's throw zero in there. Zero, zero. It's a useful one. Put in zero, you get zero. So zero, zero. There's a little point right there. Um, one, one. One, comma, one. Uh, two, comma, four. One, two, three, four. Four. Right there. Three, comma, nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, negative one, positive one. What do you think? If you put negative two in there, what would you get? Four. You get positive four. Negative two times itself would be four. Negative four, there we go. Negative two. All right, so you can start to connect these dots. We see that the further away from the origin we get, the further away we move this way, the bigger those numbers get and the faster they get bigger. Right? Does that make sense? Getting bigger, faster, and faster, and faster. Huh? Okay. Uh, all right, so we'll come over to the next one. Well, we got the same inputs, but how do our outputs compare? Compared to this, these outputs. Four times. Four times bigger, right? And so if we go to graph these, and the outputs are vertical, the y things are either represented by going up or going down, uh, if those y values, those outputs, are four times as big, then what effect is that going to have on the graph's shape? Four times steeper. Four times steeper. OK, zero, zero. One, four, two, 16. Two, 16. And we won't bother to go all the way to 36. We're going too far up here to worry about. This side looks like this. This side's going to be negative 1, 4, and negative 2, 16. And we get a mirror image on the other side. And in case it's not very clear, this shape is not pointed. It's nice and smooth. It's a smooth curve. Um, this function also takes things in, and it squares them, and then after they get squared, then what? You get reverse. You get reverse, made opposite, multiplied by a negative one, made negative, right? So uh, we'll multiply by a negative one. Whatever number goes in there, multiplied by a negative one. Um, so we put one, or let's go with zero, zero in there. Zero squared is zero. You put a negative on a zero, it's still zero. You put a one in here, you square it. OK, well, that's what happened here. We squared this. So this is what you get when you square it. So the next thing would cause it to be what? What would the output of this function be then? Negative one. OK, you put in two. This function puts out a four, right? That takes that four, multiplies it by a negative. Put in three, you get nine. That part's nine. You put a negative on front of it, you get negative nine. You put in a negative one, you get out a one when you square it, and you put it, you get out a negative one ultimately. Okay? So these outputs are just like these outputs. When you compare this one to what's called the parent function, uh, they're the exact same, except for, well, they couldn't be any more different, I guess. They're the exact opposite. Okay? They're the same numbers, they're the same in magnitude, but they're in the negative region. So zero, zero, one, negative one, two, negative four. 3, negative 9. And likewise on this side. Negative 2, negative 4. So what does this multiple of 4 do to the graph? What times steeper. steeper? What effect does this have on the graph? Wait, what? We could also say uh, this one opens up, whereas this one opens down. The common uh, verbiage used. This one, again, it starts out the same as this original one in blue. It starts out with x squared. And then something comes out after it gets squared. 
same output, right? X squared output, same outputs for the X squared part, but then we add three. Add three to that output. So we're just gonna take the, the output from X squared and we're gonna add three to it. So we come back here, put in one, get out one for X squared, add three to that, add three to one, you get four. And we can do it with zero, so we put in zero, zero squared is zero, add three, you get three, zero, zero, three. Uh, put in two, two squared is four, you add three, you get seven, you add three to nine, and you get 12, you add three to one, and you get four. So what effect is that gonna have on the graph? It just makes every output three more. Instead of zero, zero, we're at zero, one, two, three. Instead of one, one, we're at one, four. Instead of at two, four, we're at two, seven. So that's four, five, six, seven. Uh, instead of nine, instead of three, nine, we're at three, twelve. symmetry on the other side. Right, so it looks exactly the same as well, except for it just shifts up three. Nothing else has changed, it's not steeper, it's not upside down, it's just moved up three. Does this all sound familiar? Yeah. Is the same kind of thing that happens to the absolute value function, we multiply it and it gets steeper. And we would add something to it, move up, subtract something, it would move down. And multiply uh, by a negative, it would go upside down. Right? It's all the same. And the thing that I want you to see, the reason why it's the same is because they have the same effect on the output of the original function. The original function is x squared. If we take that output from x squared and we multiply it by 4, it's going to make it 4 times as big. Right? So same input, but 4 times as big the output. Okay. Here, same, same input we just get the opposite of the original output. Same input for this function, the output is just three more than the output of the original function. You just take the original outputs and add three. So let's, um, let's write something here. We got y equals, we could have a x squared, let's say plus b, this could maybe be a negative. Uh, so B, what does B do to the graph? When you add a B after the output, it moves the uh, graph up bottom down. of the graph up or down. It moves the bottom. Does it move the other parts? Yeah. Yeah. So it moves all of the points, right? Not that you're, uh, you know, you're not mistaken. It does move the bottom and everything else along with it. So it moves it. Uh, but B is positive, it moves it up. But B actually is negative. We're adding a negative, so that'd be subtracting, so it moves it down. Right, so it moves it up or down. Okay. What about when we multiply it by a number? What does that affect in the graph? Steepness. The steepness. Right? It could get steeper. Could it get less steep? Mm -hmm. How does it get less steep? Fractions. Fractions in half, uh, three fourths, seven eighths. Like anything that's less than one. Um, like, is, is there a number out in front of this x squared? If there is a number, what is it? One. It's one, right? One times x squared. So one is like the standard. That's that's the original steepness, and then we multiply by two steep, or three steep, or four steep, or one half is less steep, three fourths is less steep. The original output is now a fraction of what it used to be. And if we uh, if we then multiply by a negative, it does what? Flips it over the back side. Flips it over. To be even more specific. Like at any time during the process, we, we could even say flips it over its vertex. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. <coughs> so, uh, flips it over the vertex. What do I mean by the vertex? Where's Where's what? Where the point in zero is. The point. Like I want to say because the, the, you can't say zero, zero, because that one isn't. Oh, because this one's fine, yeah. Yeah. 
But all these other ones, the, vertex, the vertex is at zero, zero. Mm -hmm. Here it's at zero, three. Mm -hmm. right? I think we all get what it is, right? If, it, if it's uh, opening up, then it's the very bottom, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's opening down, it's the very top, right? So wherever the vertex is, it's either the very bottom or the very top, depending on which way it's opening up or down. All right. So same story again. Add something after the output, up and down. Multiply by negative uh, makes it open up or down, makes it uh, flip over the vertex. And then if you multiply by a number that's bigger than one, it makes it steeper. A number that's less than one, less steep. Um, well, that didn't take long. So let's do 33. Now we graph 33. If it flips over the x-axis, well then, that would be different. I'll show you how it can be different. To be safe, let's do all these things in the order that they would happen, right? The order of operation. Okay. First, x squared gets multiplied by 6, changes to steepness. Then, multiply by negative, goes upside down. Then, moves down 1. Okay? That'll probably be the easiest thing to do. Uh, and we, we could do like those first two things with each other, right? Make it six times steeper and then flip it over. Right? So if we look at the graph of y equals x squared, then we see 0, 0, right? 0, 0. Um, this one puts out a 0, but then multiplies by negative 6, negative 6 times 0 is? Zero, so that doesn't change. The vertex is still there. We haven't subtracted one yet. So you can still say like that. Um, this one goes through one, one. So our graph must go through not one, one, and not one, six, right? Because that, that wouldn't make it six times as steep. <coughs> but one, one, negative six. I haven't subtracted one yet. I'm not subtracting one quite yet. Okay. So one, negative six, okay? And two, not two, four, not two, 24, right? Because that'd be six times as big, but two, negative 24. Symmetry, we have this nice symmetry about uh, the shape. So it'll go down like this. And I'm not going to connect those all because what haven't I done yet? Would 32 negative 12? Well, it's 2, we put 2 in there, right? Yeah. What's 2 squared? 4. And then we multiply by 6. Make sure you don't multiply by 6 first. 
would be especially bad because then, then you get 12 squared. That wouldn't be correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so before I connect them, though, I'd have to erase it. What should I do next? Subtract one. Subtract one from each of those, right? These are the outputs that I would get from negative 6x squared. Now we're going to subtract one. We subtract one from zero, we get negative one. We subtract one from negative six, we get negative seven. Likewise here, down here, negative 24 minus one, negative 25. Subtract one from all those and all the points in between as well. Getting one subtracted from them, not that way. Going through here, now the vertex is down there. Questions about, about that? It's all, and we're going to do this lots of times throughout this year. We're going to learn about a new function, and then we shift it around. We're going to see it goes up, then it goes down, it goes left and right, it, it changes its steepness. It's all the same shtick every time. So if our function looks like that, it could have a, uh, something that changes its steepness could uh, flip it upside down, could move it up and down, shift it up and down. All right, how does that feel? Like you can do that, okay, would be a problem. Okay, it would be a problem. Okay, so that's sum of 4.1, now I'm gonna borrow a little bit from 4.2, and uh, we'll bring in something a little bit different, but it's, it's gonna be a lot the same as what we did with our absolute value. So uh, think about what you think that would do to the graph of x squared. Would that be different? Would it be steeper? Would it be up and down? Would it flip upside down? Would it turn inside out? Would it be wobbly? What would it do? Okay. And if you're, once you have a guess, then plot some points. Just pick some points, plot them on the graph, see how it looks like. So we put negative 2 into x squared, what do we get out? Negative 2 into x squared, we get 4. So negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 1 squared, 1. 0 squared, 0. 1 squared, 1. 2 squared, 4. 3 squared, 9. Okay. Well, we're not really changing what happens here. We're still squaring some number. Um, but this minus 3 is, is changing the number that we square. Okay, that's one thing. Um, the outputs aren't going to be any like bigger, right? They're not going to be like four times bigger, three times bigger, or opposite, or anything like that. So we should get the same outputs from this function. This function should give us the exact same outputs as this function, but then something else <coughs> should change there. Right? We're still squaring numbers. So we'll still, we could square one, we could square two, square three, square four, depending on what we plug in. If we plug in negative two into here, negative two minus three is negative five. To put negative 5 in here, we'd have to put negative 5 in there. But if we put negative 2 in here, we subtract 3, and it's already negative 5. So what's negative 5 squared? 25. 25. Okay, put negative 1 in there. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So we go negative 5, negative 4, like we're, we're stepping up one by one. We're just doing it like three steps behind. Okay. Uh, so negative 1 minus 3, negative 4, 4 squared is 16. 
zero, and here zero minus three is negative three squared is nine. And one minus three is negative two, negative two squared is four, okay? And so it's at this point right here, we put negative one in there, we subtract three, okay? And now, finally, when we put in one, now we're squaring negative two, right? One minus three is negative two, we're squaring negative two, uh, here, right, when we plug in 1, here we plugged in negative 2 to square negative 2, and here we're doing it three steps later, right, or three steps behind. Okay. I'm trying to help you understand this horizontal shift maybe from a different perspective. Okay. Um, to get to the same output as this function, we have to take three steps forward to get those same outputs. Okay. And if we go to 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, right? Now we're like catching up with these outputs, but we're like three steps behind it. We have to move up three steps to, uh, to have the same outputs. And then 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, 0 squared is 0. You can see 4, 1, 0, 4, 1, 0. If we put in 4, 4 minus 3 is 1, right? 4 squared is 16, but 4 minus 3 is 1. So now we're squaring, we're getting what we got out of this function three steps ago. One. But the outputs will be exactly the same. We'll go one, and then we'll go four, and then we'll go nine, sixteen, twenty-five, thirty-six, and so on. Okay. We're just in the input department, we're a little bit off. So our y equals x squared looks like this. What's y equals x minus 3 squared going to look like? Can we shift it down? If we shift it down, we'll get, we'll get negative. Right? These are negative outputs, aren't they, down here? Did we get any negative outputs out of this? Can you get negative outputs out of this? If you square something, are you ever going to get something that's negative? No. No, I won't get anything that's ever negative out of squaring. Remember... It's like our inputs, we need to step ahead three inputs in order to get the same outputs as the original function. Right? So we step forward three. Now we get three comma zero, not zero comma zero. We get four comma one, not one comma one. We get five comma four, not two comma four. Right? We have to go all the way up to five so that when we subtract three, we're at the same place that this one was at x equals 2. So they're the same graph, just the orange one is shifted to the right three. Okay, remember that? Mm -hmm. Shifting to the right, shifting to the left. What if we did a couple of things at once? We did uh, x plus 2 squared. What's that plus 2 going to do? Left 2. Move it to the left 2. Okay. This, this shape has a name. This shape is called parabola. It'll move the parabola to the left 2. And we subtract 5 after we're done getting those outputs. What's that going to do? Move it down 5. So left 2, down 5. Left two down five and, and draw the graph. And if you pay attention, when we shift it to the left two, that's negative two, right? And then down five, that's negative five. That's where you'll find your vertex. If it, if it shifts everything to the left two and down five, then it'll shift the vertex from zero, zero to the left two, that's negative two. And down five, that's negative five in the y direction. <coughs> All right. So we could have something like that. Right. It's exactly the same as what I wrote down before, uh, right there. Only now we've allowed for something to happen inside of the X.
or inside of the square with x. This still moves it, a shift up or down. It just depends on what k is, positive or negative. This is going to shift it uh, left and right. This will still affect the steepness. And this would flip it vertically over its vertex. And like I said before, whatever h is, and keep in mind we're subtracting that. Right? We need to write this as subtraction for this rule to work. Uh, if it's addition, we need to write it as minus a negative. So if we had uh, To, to write this that way, we'd have to write this as y equals x minus a negative 2. So that's h plus k, but that one's not as, uh, as odd to us, right? Plus a negative 5. Well, whatever h and k are, your vertex is at h comma k, as long as you remember to write it as minus h. And that's why, if it's written this way, it's called vertex form. So we'll stick in 4.2 for just a minute and we'll stay with vertex form. We'll find the vertex. And then it's a matter of making it more or less steep, making it open up or down, moving it, well, we don't move it left or right because that's what we do when we find the vertex. Find the steepness and find it if it goes, opens up or opens down. So let's uh, go to 4.2. The exercises we're going to come back to 4.1. And I'm going to mix it up a little bit because I felt like the flow was better. Okay. Number 7. Here's 4 times x. So walking around, I noticed that a lot of you, most of you, are um, just finding a bunch of solutions, or making a table of values, and putting in a number for x, and seeing what y is. And that's that's great. I mean, that is uh, is really important to understand the connection between those solutions and the fact that those solutions, when we plot them, we put those points, and we connect those points. That's what the graph is. That's a really important thing to understand. Um, and, and math is about crunching the numbers uh, a lot of times, but it's also about pattern recognition. Right? So I, I would encourage you to, uh, in order to save yourself some time, and also to stretch your brains to grow beyond what they feel comfortable just being, uh, to, uh, if, if these patterns don't uh, jump out at you, then spend some time with them and, and start back over. Start with y equals x squared. Go to x squared plus 2. Right? And you, you may know that this moves it up too, but um, explain it to yourself. Teach it again to yourself. Why? If I add 2 or I add 3 or I add 5 or I add 6, why does that move it up? Right? Why does that move the graph up? If the graph is just a collection of all the solutions. And the, the y values of this function are two more than the y values of this function. The y values on the graph are vertical. So if they're two more, they're two higher. Um, if you only want to stay in a place where you just put in numbers for x and figure out what y would be and plot them, and then you kind of know what a parabola should look like, and then you connect the dots the way they should look, um, it's all right. That, that'll, those will get you to the graph. Um, but 
there will be yeah. certain things that you're missing if you choose not to internalize these, these patterns. Moving up, moving right, getting steeper, going upside down. Well, let's first talk about where the vertex is, right? Which encapsulates, if we find where the vertex is, we found, you know, is it, is it here, is it over there, is it there, down here and over there? It encapsulates the left and right shift and the up and down shift. And if we get those two things, then it's, that's two parts that are done with. Um, so the vertex uh, includes in a way, it includes uh, the left-right shift and the up-down shift. Okay, that being said, where is the vertex? Gordon? Two, four. Two, four, right? It moves to the right two. To the right two. Everything's going to move to the right two, including the vertex. So it'll be at x is 2, and y is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Everything's going to move to the right 2 and up 4, including the vertex, which puts the vertex at 2, 4. A helpful piece of information. So now you don't have to worry about moving anything else left, right, up, or down. It's all been done if we can keep everything else straight uh, around the vertex. Um, just a quick note here. If I know where the vertex is, then once I draw the parabola, what's going to be uh, special about that dotted line I just draw? It's a line of symmetry. It's exactly, exactly it. This is right through the vertex. It's actually, we call it the axis of symmetry, but there's no reason why we wouldn't call it the line of symmetry, other than this is what the books call it, the axis of symmetry. OK. Uh, so if, if nothing else happened, if, this, if the uh, y equals x squared graph hadn't changed for any other reason than just minus 2 and plus 4, we would graph it like normal. We'd go up 1 over 1, or up 1 over 1, uh, 1, 1, right? 2, 4, 3, 9. 416, 525, 636, right? Just with this is our reference point. Right? The actual inputs and outputs would be a little different. One one would actually be three five, right? but we can we can move over that much uh, from the graph. Except for it's not going to be just that. It's, it's going to be multiplied by a negative four. Right? So what effect is that going to have on the graph? That negative four. by negative 4, what does that do? It'll be a negative is going to flip it over its axis yeah. and 4 is going to make it 4 times steeper. No? Okay. Is that... Everybody agree or are we silent because we don't know? Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Agree? Okay. Well, then we'll say... Good. So, um, it goes from going over 1 and up 1 to going over 1 and down 1 and going from over one and down one to over one and down four, right? To the to this four times steeper. So uh, oh, this is going to be right here on the x-axis. Um, and line of symmetry tells us that it's symmetrical. Okay. Instead of going over two and up four, because two squared is four, we're going to go two squared and negative four because we got the negative uh, and if you multiply that by 4, that'll be negative 16, right? 16 below where the vertex is, okay? Which will be negative 12. 12, there, there. And also, just as, uh, you know, an equal distance away from the, the line of symmetry, we have another one at negative 12. <coughs> okay. 
So we can find that uh, that vertex and the line of symmetry, and uh, and then figure out if it's steeper or less steep, and if it's upside down or if it's right side up. Um, it's not too difficult. So we all feel confident. Is there anybody who wants to go through another problem like this one where, you know, similar to this, it, it might go up and down, left right, steeper, less steep, upside down maybe. Or does that feel good? Say we had an equation like this, a function like this, x plus 2 squared um, minus 1. Well, this is what again is called vertex form, and that wouldn't be too difficult to, to graph. We can find the vertex and then go from there. Um, but it might be written in a different way, uh, not in vertex form, but what's called standard form. And to go from vertex to standard form, we do something that I'm sure you've all done, and you've probably called it foiling. Right? You guys foiled before? Okay. I'm going to say, uh, forget about that. Forget about foiling, yeah? Yeah, sorry. Okay. So we're going to say goodbye to foiling. Right? And here's, here's why. It, it's my preference, and it is my class, so that's what we're going to do. It's not because you were doing it wrong or anything, like it'll get you the right answer, but when we boil math down to these mnemonic devices, right, these things that help us mem remember things, really for the sake of remembering them, uh, sometimes it robs us of the understanding of, of what's going on, and foiling is one of those things. Uh, it's helpful, it helps us remember first, outside, inside, last. But that is only true of, of something that has only uh, firsts, insides, outsides, and lasts. If I did x plus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 3, I can still do first, inside, or let's see, first, uh, inside, outside, and last. But if you paid attention, you noticed this never interacted with anything. Okay. The truth of it is, what we're really doing, we're just using the distributive law. We're just using the distributive law. We're just taking something, multiplying it by parentheses that have has a sum or maybe a difference. Just distributing this parentheses into that one. Right. Um, we talked about this uh, with the distributive law. We talked about the distributive law, uh, but this is just expands on that. If we call this distance x and this distance x, the thing about the, the hard thing about x is that it's a it's a variable, like it changes, and so I can't really represent it by a length. We just have to accept that it is like this thing that, that might change. We could stretch this out if we wanted to. But if this is x, then this distance, right, they, they would both be the same. That's the important part. Okay? And let's say that this represents uh, 1, 2. Okay. So that's x and 2, x plus 2 is this side. And x plus uh, 2 on this side would look like that. Okay. Try to make those distances about the same. And we're represented by a rectangle. We talked about this when we talked about the, the distributive law. So if we want to do x plus 2, plus 2, and this is 2, uh, then it would be equivalent to finding the area of this, this square, right? And we are squaring it. Something times itself is square. So this part would be x squared. Okay. And this part would be two times the distance x. So this would be an x, and this would be an x. Uh, same as over here. This would be an x, and this would be an x. And over here, we have two times two. Two times two. 
So this would be 1, 1, 1, and 1. So we have an x squared plus 4x's plus 4. And you can see that it, it, when you set it up this way, everything has to get multiplied by every other thing. This x has to get multiplied by this 2, this x by that 2, this 2 by this 2, this x by that x. This x times this x, this x times this 2, there's that. Uh, then this 2 times this x, so this 2 times this x, so you go right there. And this 2 times this 2. Here's your 4. So obviously, doing FOIL, just do the exact same thing, and it will give you the exact same answer. But as soon as we have more than two terms, FOIL no longer works. And if you were always relying on FOIL to multiply these two things together, the only way you could remember was with FOIL, then, then you won't get everything when it comes to multiply, uh, like I said, x plus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 5. If you just follow, follow FOIL, you'll miss at least a couple of things. And then if we have three terms times three terms, like it just gets worse and worse. Move away from FOIL, realize we're just doing distributive law. We just need to distribute everything from here to everything in here. So uh, x plus 2 squared, we just looked at that. x plus 2 squared is x squared plus 4x plus 4. Or x squared plus uh, 2x, 4x. x squared plus 4x plus uh, that's just the x plus 2 squared. So we're going to subtract 1. x squared plus 4x plus 3. So what form was this? Do you remember what form that's written in? What's that? In the vertex form. Because the vertex is that, we could look negative 2, negative 1. Vertex form. By multiplying the x plus 2 times itself, we've written it in standard form. Vertex form looks like that. Uh, standard form looks like this. Just a number times x squared plus another number times x plus some other constant. And all we need to get do to get from vertex form to standard form is just to multiply the parentheses out and uh, you know add the constant, and we'll be done with it. So to square something means what? What does it mean to square a thing? Square a number. By, by itself. By itself, right? And that goes for a number or any quantity, right? A quantity. So this whole thing, if it's being squared, needs to be multiplied by itself. After we're done with that, we're going to add 6. When you're multiplying two parentheses together, I think it's helpful to just draw an arrow for every step that you Everything in the first needs to be multiplied by everything in the second. Okay. So we multiply these two things together. That's x squared. Multiply x times negative 3, negative 3x. Three okay. Now x has been distributed to everything in those parentheses. And we move on to the next thing, negative 3. Negative 3 multiplied by x is negative 3x. 
negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 is positive 9. That's from that. Then we add 6. x squared minus 6x, combine the like terms here, plus 15. And now it's a standard form. A is 1, B is negative 6, and C is 15. So, uh, going from standard or from vertex form to standard form, not too hard. We just multiply everything together. So there's there's not any parentheses left. We just get something times x squared, something times x, and some constant. Okay. Um, let's see. Before we do anything further. All right, so now we see the comparison, at least between vertex form and standard form. And um, if it's in vertex form, I think it's probably about the easiest it can be to graph. It's all there. It's, it's like the mx plus b of the, uh, of the quadratic world. Okay? MX, plus b, mx plus b is simple. You got your slope and you got your y-intercept. Uh, pretty simple. Vertex form, you get your vertex, you get your steepness, you get your opening up or down. Uh, pretty simple. Gordon? If we have easier ways of doing it, why do we have standard form? Why do we just have one form? Uh, well, the, the rationale behind it is just be ready for anything. But if we're just going to, can we just convert it to that same form and then do it that way? Putting it in vertex form is a lot trickier than it seems. Okay, well, that's, that's a, a project for another day. To go from standard form into vertex form is harder than vice versa. Okay. Okay. Because to go from vertex form to standard form, it's already given to you what you're supposed to multiply together. You multiply it together, and here's the, here's the key piece. You, for one thing, like this this works out really nicely. What if this was like negative five, right? Then it would be the result of having added two identical things together to get negative five. So you're going to have to add, add together negative five halves and negative five halves to get negative five. Right? Uh, and on top of that, this constant right here is the sum of this constant and this constant. The constant you get from multiplying them together and the constant that is already there. Right? So to go backwards, you have to know how to separate this number into two constants. Right, uh, and you wouldn't. You would have to know that you're supposed to leave nine and not ten or or twelve. And what if there's nothing there any, at all? Right? What do you do then? Um, so there's a few more steps in the process. A little more reasoning. Uh, this is like taking something apart. This is like putting it back together. So if everyone would just write in vertex form, then you wouldn't have problems. And our lives would be a little easier, but. <coughs> But instead, we have to write in standard form just to confuse people. No, because different problems present themselves in different ways. Not yeah. just because the writer of the book did that, but because uh, maybe if we're, we're formulating something, we're, we're putting together a model, and it, it turns out to be quadratic. Quadratic, by the way, is what you get when, when x squared is the biggest, uh, the x with the biggest exponent. Not just x to the first, and not as big as x cubed, but the biggest power of x is 2. Okay. That's, that's a quadratic. And it's, it's all the ones we've been working with. x squared, x squared. You've seen x squared over and over and over. That's a quadratic. Okay. But again, if you're, if you're making a model of something and it just turns out that it's easiest to write it in standard form to begin with, then you might want to deal with it in standard form. You might want to know how to write it to take it from standard form into vertex form. But to understand how to go the other way, we kind of need to get all this, this multiplying stuff together and right, what's making up the standard form, what makes it the way it is. So what we're going to do now is, uh, is jump back to 4.1. Say it was in standard form to start with. We don't know how to put it in vertex form quite yet. So uh, let's look at some, some quick ways to get to the things that we want uh, in order to graph. If it's in standard form,
that a is always going to be the name that we give to the, the coefficient of x squared, and b is always going to be the name we give to the coefficient of x, and c is always the constant. Okay? C is kind of easy to remember because it starts with c, it's the constant. All right. Now, even if I write it as c plus bx plus ax squared, a still goes with x squared, b still goes with x, c is still the constant. Okay? That's how it goes. So, um, that line of symmetry we can find by taking b, actually negative b, so you take the opposite of b over 2 times a. And that's going to be the line of symmetry. We remember that x equals a number is going to be uh, a vertical line, so x equals negative b over 2a is the line of symmetry. Going back to 4.1. Um, and um, okay, number 22. Y equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 4. So it's not in vertex form. It's not as easy to say it just moves to the right or moves to the left, moves up and down. You know, we, we, we can't even say that it moves up 4. That's not even true, okay? Because it's not in vertex form. It is not in the form of a number squared and then plus another number, a number squared times another number. Right? That's more true to the original x squared function. Okay. So what do we do? Well, first we can find the line of symmetry. x equals negative b. Negative b, here's b. Negative b would be positive 6. 2a, that's 6 over 6, that's 1. So at x is 1, we could draw our line of symmetry. That line of symmetry, or axis of symmetry, is uh, that place that the parabola is reflected over. That's where we find that mirror uh, that, that reflects one side exactly up to the other. So this is all we know so far, but if, if we know where the axis of symmetry is, where is the line of symmetry, or the axis of symmetry going to go through on the parabola? Through the vertex, right? Through the vertex. Okay. So now we found this x value of 1. The vertex is going to have an x value of 1. Right? It's going to be somewhere along this line. We just don't know quite where yet. Well, if we know the x, can we find the y? If we know the x, how do we find the y? Just insert the x. Just shift the x. Insert it in for x and do the math, and there you go. Right? So in this case, we're going to go 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 4. That's 3 minus 6. That's negative 3 plus 4 is... Is one. One, one is where the vertex is. And now we just we need some other points just to get an idea of uh, you know how steep it's gonna be and which way it's gonna open. How are we going to find some other points? Plug something in. What, what would be, uh, if we're going to plug something in, what would be something easy to plug in for x? Two. Two wouldn't be too hard. Would that be something even easier to plug in for x? Zero. Zero. I like zero. Plug zero in for x. The x's go away. So if we put in 0, 3 times 0 is 0, minus 6 times 0 is 0, so we're just left with 4. Okay. So 0, comma 1, 2, 3, 4. The nice thing about parabolas is that they are uh, symmetrical. So that tells us that there's another point 
it also has an output of four. Where else will we find an output of four? Two. At two, right? Just on the other side of the axis of symmetry, right there. If we uh, connect those points in a way that we know, you know, parabolas look, then uh, we have it. We have a good representation of this function as a graph. So the line, line of symmetry is negative b over 2a. We take this guy, we plug it in for x. We plug that in for x. We find the y value of the vertex. Let me find another couple of points um, uh, near the, the line of symmetry, the axis of symmetry. Um, Plugging in zero if that is helpful, if that's you know off of the vertex, and then just mirroring that and having another point and connecting the points in a parabola. Okay. One last thing we need to talk about. And that's intercepts. That's x-intercepts. So what's an x-intercept? Draw a graph. How would you point out the x-intercepts? Gordon? X-intercepts are where the line or quadratic function, whatever, meets the x-axis. Right. So anywhere that it meets the x-axis, that'd be an x-intercept. How many x-intercepts can a parabola have? Could have one, could have two. Any others? None, right? You could have none. You could have zero, or one, or two. So here's an example of one that has two. Wait, how would, how would it have zero? Well, here's an example of one that has one, and here's one that has zero. down and goes back up before it gets, ever gets down to the x-axis. Change the color of this one next. So. So, you know, one, two, one, that. Here's the important thing. intercepts have in common? Yeah. Y is equal to zero. Right? By definition, if you're on the x-axis, then y would have to be equal to zero. I don't know what these x values are, but I do know that the y value has to be zero. And, and if we have the equation for these graphs, then, then how do we typically get the y value? How do you find the y value? Well, just for any point on the graph, if I want to find a y value, how do I typically find that y value? Plug in x. Plug in x. Right. There's, there's probably lots of answers to that question. I was looking for that one. I was looking for you plug in the x value and you get the y value typically. Right. So for an x intercept, we plug in a number and we get out what? When we get out of the function, when we are at an x intercept. Zero. Whatever you put in, you get out zero. Put in, I don't know, but you get zero. Put in, I don't know what it is, but you get zero. <coughs> okay. So if I were to write a function like this, well, we could we can multiply these two parentheses together, and we could write it in standard form. I would expect it to be able to do that. We just distribute the x in there, into there, and that into there, into there. Okay. But just like um, vertex form, writing it this way, writing it in this form, has its advantages as well. Okay. Makes it easy to find intercepts. Let's go back to this picture. What do all y-intercepts have in common? Or x-intercepts have in common? Zero for the y. Zero for the y. I want you to look at this guy right here, knowing that Whatever you plug in for x, you get that number. You plug 
the same number in parentheses here, you get that number. And then what do you do? You multiply it together. Right? And if we're looking for the x-intercepts, we want this to come out to be 0. Right? We want the y value, the output, to be 0. So can anyone tell me a number they think might cause this whole expression to be worth 0? Zero, maybe zero. Okay, we put zero in there, what do we get? Zero plus two is two. And zero minus three is negative three. So we get negative six. So that didn't give us zero. Negative 2.5. Negative 2.5. Negative 2.5 plus two times negative 2.5 minus three. Negative 2.5 plus 2 is negative 0.5. Negative 0.5 times negative 3 minus 2.5 is negative 5.5. Is that going to be 0? No. How did you know so right and so quickly that it wasn't going to be 0? How do you know that when you multiply these together, they won't be 0? If one of them has to be 0? Maybe that's something to think about. Because the answer is 2.7. 2.75? Mm -hmm. Are you saying that's what you get when you multiply those two together? Yeah. Okay. Yes? Negative 2. Yeah. Negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 times negative 2 minus 3, you get 0 times negative 5. It doesn't even matter that it's negative 5, right? You multiply by 0, you get 0. Tristan's a genius. So x equals negative 2. That's one place on the x-axis where we'll find a y-intercept. Where else? X equals 3. If x equals 3, then 3 minus 3 is 0, and 0 times, it doesn't even matter what that is, you get 0 again. Any others? Any other possibilities? If you're going to multiply two numbers together, if you're going to multiply two numbers together, right? here's a number, and we're going to multiply it by another number. Just using some random symbols here. We're going to multiply them together and get 0. What do you know about one of these numbers? Is it possible for both of them to not be 0? No. You can't multiply two non-zero numbers together not, and, and, and get 0. If you multiply two non-zero numbers together, you get something that's not 0. The only way to get 0 is to multiply by 0. So, if this is 0, then this will be 0. And if this is 0, this again will be 0. Right? If we solve these two equations, x equals negative 2 and x equals 3, those are the two solutions that we found just by looking at it and saying, hey, one of those has to be 0 if we're going to multiply to get 0. Uh, and those are the numbers that would work. Negative 2 and 3, clearly, the other one doesn't work. So on the graph, at negative 2 and x equals negative 2, we have an x-intercept. And at positive 3, we have an x-intercept. Right. Those are two points on the parabola. Please excuse the interruption. Please release the JV football team. Please release the high school JV football team. Thank you. So those are two points on the parabola, and parabolas are symmetrical. So where will we find that axis of symmetry? Point five. Huh? How did you figure out point five? Right in the middle of those two, right? Like the average of those two. If I added three plus negative 2 and divide by 2, right, the average, divide by the average, the mean, uh, then 3 minus 2 is 1, divided by 2 is 1 half. So the axis of symmetry goes right through there. And just like before when we found the axis of symmetry, vertex is somewhere on there, we're plugging that half in there, and that will tell us where the y value of the vertex is. And then we have enough points to, to connect and draw this graph. And what would you do, again, if you want to write this in standard form? What's that? 
x times x. Multiply this. Multiply them again. Right. And we know what that means. It means multiply this by that, this by that, this by this, this by this. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you that in a, in a different way when you multiply those together. Like x plus 2 times x minus 3. You can draw those lines to help you uh, work your way through it. Right? And that would work for no matter how many pieces are here, but uh, just to see it a different way. If I had 5 times x minus 3, I would do 5 times x and 5 times negative 3 minus 15. That's true of anything, whether it's a number or a, a, another parenthesis. So take this, multiply by that, by that. Okay. If I multiply x plus 2 times x, I have x plus 2 times x. Right? And by negative 3, I have plus x plus 2 times negative 3. And that becomes distribution more like this, which is just one term outside the parentheses. And just every term is getting multiplied by x plus 2, which is the same as what we said before. But now we can look at it. Uh, it looks a little more like we're used to, I guess. Plus, we got negative 3 times x, we got negative 3x minus 6. And then we combine like terms here it's x squared minus x minus 6. However, you look at it, just make sure. Every term in here, every term, this one and this one, gets multiplied by every term in here, this one and this one. Full distribution of everything and everything else, and then combine those terms. And later in the year, it won't be too much longer, when we have three terms or four terms in a parentheses, and we go to multiply them together, it'll just be a natural extension. Just take this, multiply it through the whole parentheses. So we go to the next one, multiply it through the whole parentheses, and on and on and on. Okay. And then you add a third axis. Um, no. Really? To have a third axis, you need a third variable. Right? One axis, like x equals 2, one axis. 0, 2, x equals 2. Now, if x equals 2 only when y equals 4, right? now we've got this two variable relationship, we have two things to show, two values to show. That's why we have two variables. Okay, x equals 2 when y equals 4, or vice versa, y equals 4 when x equals 2. Okay, so you get a third variable in there like z. You put a third axis, and then it gets really hard to graph on a piece of paper. But paper is two dimensional. Right. So we could say, okay, z equals 1 when x equals negative 2. z equals 1 when x equals negative 2 and y equals 5 or 3 or something. And so we wind up with a point that's like here, but it's kind of hard to tell where that is. <laughs> And that's why they invented the computer. Have a good day. That's why they invented the computer. That's why they invented the computer. So you can